Hello, I'm Kirby Repco, and today we're going to set up a web app pointing to a PostgreSQL database. We're going to set this up so it's really easy to deploy your code to the web app. Also, we're going to set up the database so that it makes it much easier to performance tune what's going on in that database. Okay, so let's jump right into it. We're going to do a web application. It's going to be a PHP simple app, and that's going to be hitting a PostgreSQL database in the back end. So here's the steps that we're going to do to make this happen. First of all, we're going to go into the Azure portal and create a web app and a PostgreSQL uh, DB. Then we're going to grab the IP addresses from that web app and add them to the database whitelist. Um, uh, and that's uh, security reasons we want to open that up so that they can talk to each other. Then we're going to look at the database and change a couple parameters that are going to be helpful for you as you monitor and tune your database and application. Uh, then um, we're going to create the DB restore database, just give you some syntax on how that's done. Run the app locally, you probably already know how to do that. But then I'll show you how to zip deploy the app out to the Azure website, um, uh, the web app, which makes it really easy to deploy your application. Then of course we're going to run it. So here we go. Okay, let's do step one to create the web app and PostgreSQL database. So we're on the Azure portal here. Click the plus here and you're gonna go to the marketplace. It's like the store where you um, configure, set up things in Azure. So let's just type web app uh, and then Postgres. You see a little drop down here, click that. And in one step, it's gonna create both the web app and the PostgreSQL database for you. Click create. Give it a unique name here, Kirby's Demo App 2. And if you have more than one subscription to Azure, you'll have to pick it here. And resource groups are great, a uh, great way, a logical way of containing the things that you create. Uh, so we'll just let it create a, a new uh, resource group there. Okay, and then you can leave the app service plan the way it is. The database, we're gonna need to set that up. So it'll pick a name for you. Here's a user, I'm gonna change that to Kirby. Then you can give it a, a password that's uh, nice and strong. I would go ahead and bump this version to version 10, with the latest one. And then here's where you can pick, up, pick out the size of your server. Um, just clicking on these sliders here, you can pick uh, different uh, virtual cores, etc. But we'll just start with just a 50 gigabyte one um, for now. Okay, so we'll click OK. OK, and then a final create. And that'll just do some validation, make sure everything's set up correctly on this page. And then you'll see this deployment in progress. So we'll give that a couple minutes. Okay, so that took a few minutes, but if you look up here, um, if I click the little uh, bell here, you'll get your notifications. And it said that this deployment was successful. What I like to do right away is pin it to the dashboard, just click that. Um, so then you can see it in, in your portal uh, easily. And we can go straight to the resource. Slow, uh, so let's click the go to resource here. And on the overview pane, this is important to grab this URL. This is, you just click that to copy it. That is the URL of your actual application. And then we're going to scroll down and go to properties right there. The reason we're going to properties is we also want to copy and paste uh, the outbound IP addresses here. So you can just copy those. And uh, the reason we're copying those is we need that in uh, the whitelist. We're going to whitelist those on the DB server so that this web app can talk to the DB server. Now, if you're asking, where is my DB server? Um, let's find it. So what you can do is hit this little bell icon here, go back to this notification, and um, it says, here's your web app, but it was deployed to this deployment, uh, this resource group. Remember, I talked about setting up a new resource group. So if we click that, then that's an easy way to be able to find um, what we had just set up because we set up both this app service and the database in the same resource group. So now we're clicking on the database server itself. 
and this is where you can uh, take note of the server name. We're going to need that in a subsequent step here and the ID. Uh, you can reset the password just like you can on the app server if necessary. But what we're going to do here first is click connection security. This is important. Uh, a couple things you want to do, allow access to Azure services. Go ahead and turn that on. But you, you also need to add your client IP. That's your actual desktop laptop that you're using to set this thing up. So all you would do is click that and then that would add a line here too. You also need to add one for each one of these, I, uh, the IP addresses that we uh, copy and you know paste it. So web app two, um, let's just uh, grab a uh, one of the ones that I took from an earlier setup, put the start IP and end IP uh, without the comma, then just clip up here and it's going to give you space for another one. So you're going to set one up for all of those different IP addresses that were in your web app as well as your client um, uh, IP. So that is one thing you want to do. Once again, we're on our database server here. So let's say save chance to save okay that's saved now let's go to server parameters okay so here we are on our database server and we have gone to server parameters There's a couple parameters here that we need to change in order to be able to track our query performance so scroll down here down to the section starting with the QS uh, sorry the PG PG underscore QS um, so the first one we want is the query capture mode. It's default set to none. Uh, click this and then go, set, go ahead and set, say all, not just the top queries, but let's track all of our queries. And then the other one is right here, PGMS weight sampling query capture mode. What this does is allow us to capture weight stats on our database. So click all on that. And those are both set to all. Now you click save. Okay, that's been updated. So what we just enabled there was the ability to use this query performance insight down here. If we click this, uh, there's been no queries run against this database yet, but uh, this will allow you to be able to see what's going on in your server um, and be able to identify queries that are running um, a lot or unusually long. And um, if you forget which settings to set, it tells you up here. It just it suggests to uh, turn on this, this parameter, which we've already done. Also, if you click weight statistics, same thing. If you forget which setting, it'll tell you right up here, PGMS weight sampling query capture mode. So two important things, turn those on so that you can uh, trace your, your database um, performance. In fact, this was really helpful for me. I set up an application. It was running kind of slowly, but I was looking at the queries and they were all running in like 200 milliseconds or less, really fast. And I determined that my app server was set at too low of a tier. I just bumped that up and then everything ran fine after that. Okay, of course you would either create a new database or restore to it. But for the purpose of this demo, I wanted to show you how you deploy your web app out to your server. So first of all, you're gonna have, this is a PHP app here, a simple one. Uh, you could run that locally and I'll, I'll put the commands uh, to do that in, in the video notes. Um, so we'll drop that here. So that's gonna run um, it, the, it locally so we can browse to it in a browser at 8080. Jump out to the browser. Once again, this will be in the video notes. You don't have to try and read what I'm doing. So we check, yeah, our, our app seems to run fine. Uh, but what, and then we can just control the C so it stops running it locally. But um, there's a way to be able to compress all these into a zip file and then just easily deploy that to the web app. So how do we do that? We do that through a PowerShell command um, and it's a compressed command and it's going to take all the different files, everything in this window in my PHP app here in this subdirectory, exact same directory as it is in my PowerShell um, command prompt here. And if I hit enter here, it's going to zip those. There we go. 
creating it. Now over here, you see that it just created a file called demo.zip. So how do we deploy that? Um, so go back out to Azure. And uh, once again, uh, where's our app? So we can easily click the little alert notification thing here, go to the resource group that was created for us. And then we're gonna see our web app that was created. Here's our app service, click on that. And the way that you get to what's called zip deploy is on the left hand pane here on this blade, go down to advanced tools and it's gonna prompt you uh, here to click uh, go. And this gives you uh, various things, um, including a command console, a very handy uh, feature here. What you're gonna do is click tools and then zip push deploy. And then it brings you out to a screen that looks like this. So go to your zip file here, grab that, and then just drop it right here. You'll see that go blue, drop it, and then you'll see this little uh, Swiss Army knife um, working away here at deploying. And then you'll see down here, deployment successful. That was pretty straightforward, but that's how we deploy our application to our web server. And once you've seen that it's been deployed successfully, you can then actually go to the web server itself, which we can do by clicking the overview, grabbing that URL there in our web server, just putting it in a browser, and then our application is run. So that's how quickly and easily you can set that up. Hey, thanks for watching this video. Hopefully it was helpful to you. If you like what you saw, please subscribe, and we'll see you next time.